and this is already year five as a pro, which is also crazy to say out loud. But I mean, I'm 24 turning 25. I still have time yeah. and God willing. She's young and she can achieve a lot more as she goes through the journey of life. But here's the big but. One of the things sports enthusiasts have been looking forward to seeing her achieve, at least in the near term, is another Olympic gold. Given the way she's been burning rubber on the track so far this season, the idea does not seem far-fetched. As you all know, Sydney had been missed on track competitions, by fans I mean, when she had to cut her 2023 season short because of an injury. The pressure for Paris is there, yes, but fans are simply happy to see her back on track, literally and figuratively. She dabbled in several events and distances this year, but has since announced that she will be focusing on her specialty event, the 400 meter hurdles, in this year's Summer Games. This decision probably stemmed from the fact that she intends to defend her title in the 400 meter hurdles at the Paris Olympics, and was scratched from the 200 and 400 meter flat races that she had originally signed up for. If it wasn't obvious, the world record holder had initially been entered in all three races for the US Olympic trials. That was then, this is now, as the Olympian confirmed that she will narrow her Olympic focus to what she called her first love. And so, at the 2024 US Olympics trials for track and field, McLaughlin Lavrone led from the first hurdle and then never looked back as Hayward Field roared around her, a fitting final and thrilling event for the 10-day championships. I'm definitely a little surprised it happened, but I'm still grateful, McLaughlin Lavrone told a group of reporters after. 50 point high range um, and it was just a matter of getting the stride pattern down. I knew the fitness was there, so I was a little shocked that it came together with not the best stride pattern that I was expecting. Um, even she was in a state of disbelief after posting such a quick time. That will tie the world record. Is that the world record? 50.68 was the record. It's a world record in the last event of the trials. <laughs> Sydney's done it again. Just shock. Honestly, shock, said McLaughlin Lavrone, who covered her mouth in amazement when she crossed and saw the time. I know when it first came up, it said 50.67. I was like, there's just no way. Then the clock adjusted down two ticks. I wasn't expecting that time, she said. The time she saw next to her name confirmed that she had just lowered her world record in the 400 meter hurdles for the fifth time since June, 2021. She just broke the world record and it's like we're not even shocked anymore, said Dalila Muhammad, the 2016 Olympic champion and the last person to beat McLaughlin Lavrone in a 400 hurdles race. She's been amazing the whole way through, the Olympian told reporters. Still think she can go 49, I've said it before. Um, just wearing a world record. It's like we're not even shocked at this point. So um, she's just an amazing talent, a, a generational talent for sure. And I didn't know I'm the only one to beat her, so kudos to me. <laughs> Men's 400 meter hurdles reigning Olympic silver medalist Rye Benjamin said, she's Sydney McLaughlin and I think she carries her own weight and carries it well. Benjamin also addressed the fact that Sydney was being criticized for not racing more, but reminded fans that every athlete has feelings and that Sydney is no different, regardless of her schedule. Look what happened. She didn't really race much this season and she came out here and ripped the world record, he said. Let her and Bobby Kersey do what they do. Let's see what they can do. You can just imagine how great of an athlete Sydney is and other world-class Olympians recognize her talent. There's more. Coincidentally, or was it a sign? She lowered her own world record of 50.68 to 50.65 on the very same track she set the 50.68 at the World Championships two years ago. Sydney called the world record a confidence booster going into Paris. She later admitted that before the final, her coach, the legendary Bobby Kersey, encouraged her to. Telling me not to not be afraid to take it out uh, and to trust my fitness coming home and just execute my 10 hurdles. Good thing she followed the advice, huh? When asked how she feels about representing the USA again, she said, 
think it ever gets old. I think it's like reliving that childhood dream over and over again. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. It's a really hard team to make, so I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. Uh, and I just want to do the best I can. About Paris, she will be facing off against Femke Bull, who is slowly but surely climbing, or running, her way to the top. The Dutch Olympic athlete spoke about competing alongside Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone in Paris. She expressed excitement about competing alongside the American athlete, and also stressed on improving as she gears up for a fierce battle at the quadrennial games. It's great she's there, and it will always be exciting and always bring some nice nerves. But at the same time, I'm really focused on myself. I'm always just trying to be a better athlete, and then I just hope it will bring something nice to be battling with her," she said. As quoted by Sportstar, Sydney aims for a gold, yes, setting a new world record, definitely. But even if she doesn't get either, which sounds impossible, honestly, it's fine for her too. Um, and I love this sport, but like I've said before, this sport is not everything to right. me. It's right. what I do, it's not who I am. So uh, I wanna do it well, the best that I can for as long as I can. And, and she's being genuine about it. No, I think records, yeah. they come as they come. Yeah. If you're ready, it's gonna happen. After breaking a world record in the lead up to the 2024 Summer Olympic Games, she declared that anything is possible in Christ. When asked about her thoughts on her accomplishments in an interview with NBC Sports, Lavrone proclaimed, praise God, in a different time but the same situation, she vowed to continue pushing the bounds of the sport because with God all things are possible. In an interview with the Christian Post, the Olympian said, the one thing that's unchanging is my faith in Christ and that is the most valuable thing. She added that her life's purpose is being able to share that truth with people and allow them to come to know and love the Lord in the way in which I have come to know and love. God has been so kind in just allowing me the opportunity to first of all fail without Him and realize my need for Him, she continued, living my life for so long apart from Him and trying to succeed in a worldly measure of what success looks like. It always left me empty, even when I attained it. Since intertwining God into every aspect of her life, McLaughlin Lavrone seems to have hit her stride personally and professionally. She recalled Union Catholic track head coach Mike McCabe and assistant coach Luis Cartagena guiding her during her pivotal years as an athlete. Coach McCabe always had a plan of how we would strive towards our goals, she shared. He was also very understanding of how nervous I was at such a young age, so I appreciated how he handled a lot of those situations. Coach Louise, as a hurdle coach, really made me love the hurdles and want to continue to pursue them. That was my first introduction to hurdle drills, and I really loved working on my technique. Following the 2016 Olympics, she took a break from track for two and a half years. She participated in soccer, basketball, and dance which helped improve her track performance by strengthening her legs and core, and instilling rhythm to balance speed with leaps, and develop stability, power, and coordination. Sydney's natural ability, intelligence, work ethic, and humility are some of her greatest strengths that assist with the pressure of being a high-level athlete, Coach McCabe said. Sydney always continued to improve to try and win each race that she competed in. We did our best to provide a supportive environment with a solid training plan, a plan that included short and long-term goals. I feel as though the supportive environment takes precedence over a training plan. For Sydney, I can show up to the track every day and understand that this is a gift he's given me that win, lose, or draw. It's an opportunity to glorify him, and my value is already secure in Christ. Overall, Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone is the most dominant athlete in her sport. What Tiger Woods was to golf, what Serena Williams was to tennis, what Michael Phelps was to swimming. With her faith and intense training, who knows what heights she can achieve, or time if you want to be more technical. Watch this to see who else aims to break records in Paris.